Welcome to Tremophonic Audio Stories. Tremophonic, The Sounds of Fear, is a collection of original horror stories presented in audio format. Today's story, The Audition, was written as a project of passion and is free to listen to. Please visit tremophonic.com, follow our Tremophonic social media and podcast accounts, and share our posts and stories to a wider audience. You can also find us on Patreon and buymeacoffee.com if you want to support the development of future stories. This is The Audition. Audition tape of (laughs) Jack... Auditioning for the role of Jack in The Killing Joke. Jokes. We all have a favourite joke. It's never that one about the horse who walks into a bar, or one that starts with repeated words, Doctor, Doctor, knock, knock. No, we're all much more original than that, aren't we? We all like to think we're comic masterminds. Pick a niche joke that other people haven't heard. Perhaps trying to say, look at my wacky sense of humour. But very few of us have original jokes. But here's one for you. Last night, I walked into a bar. (laughs) Look at me, already falling into that trope. But I can't change where this happened. So, this bar is a small backstreet place. It's in the centre of town, but hidden down one of those alleys. You know the type. The one that only the real locals know about. And this bar. The type with a bartender that remembers your order better than he remembers your name. If you're out of place, not a regular, (laughs) you'll be noticed here. And that's exactly what happened. As I walked through the door, I felt at least a dozen pairs of eyes on me, some just glancing up from a carefully nursed half-full pint of lager they'd been sipping so long that it's gone warm, then trying to hide their look from me, as if I was judging them. But others... others stared and glared and pierced me with a lingering gaze, their eyes following me as I approached the bar. Something about me fixated them. I couldn't imagine what. A stool at the bar was free. So, while making eye contact with the bartender, I made that internationally recognised gestured point with raised eyebrows that instantly understood as is this seat free signal. I expected a casual nod from the bartender, but instead I got a look of puzzlement, almost an expression of disgust from him, so as not to push the situation further down this decidedly awkward path. I thought I'd just stand and order my drink instead and sit elsewhere, perhaps in a dark corner, away from all these judging eyes. The barman approached me, looking me up and down, sizing me up in a mildly threatening manner. I found myself needing to tell him my tale, explain my predicament, and tell him my joke that I'd been bottling up. But that joke, dear director, was on me. In my haste, I'd neglected to tidy myself as a person should before a public outing. My hair was matted and wet, with coarse chunks of chalky white ivory littered through my patchy reddened locks. From my shirt to my shoes was a splattering made like a paintbrush had been flicked at a canvas, that canvas being me, and my paint being, well, 
meaningfully full of life and death all at once. A transition state, you could say. The moment when change took place, saturating my bodily easel with a spray of misted crimson. My dear, dear director, if, as you stated to me when last we met, your crew and your cast are like your family, then what, indeed, is your immediate family to you? Sally, your wife. Jack, your son, who you named this role after. What great import do they have in your life? What would you do to protect them? What measure should you have taken to keep them safe? Oh, how easy it could have been to just have given the role to the actor who deserved the part. <laughs> My dearest rejecter, this is your penance, your recompense, comeuppance for your misdeeds, and your chance at vindication. Your house wasn't hard to find. You were foolish enough to register your studio at your home address, and a couple of weeks of watching was all it took to know who would be home and when. <laughs> Alas, not every plan works the way it is intended, and resistance is a force that must sometimes be met with an equal and opposing force. <laughs> Though, in this instance, a little extra force was required. <laughs> so, here I hold <laughs> my souvenir. A taste of what might happen yet. And, indeed, what has already come to pass. Here I cradle your wife's pretty head. The skulls are a little fractured and some shards have splintered here and there, but if you want it returned to bury with the rest of her body, <laughs> that's still in your bedroom, by the way, there is a simple solution. Your part for her part. <laughs> I submit to you, benevolent director, this application for the part of Jack, with the expectation that you do not want your boy Jack, returned in parts. <laughs> oh, the joke. <laughs> Jokes about murders aren't funny. Unless they're properly executed. I thank you in advance for your consideration. <laughs> Thank you for listening to The Audition, presented by Tremophonic. The Audition was written, performed, recorded, and edited by Richard Wilson. Theme music, samples, and foley effects from Feslian Studios, Pixabay, and Mixkit.com. Don't forget to follow Tremophonic on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and Tremophonic.com, and keep an eye on podcast channels for our upcoming stories. As a self-funded project, we would appreciate any support you might be willing to give us on patreon.com forward slash tremophonic or on buymeacoffee.com forward slash tremophonic. Thank you for listening.